Hello and welcome to my vlog. Today we're going to talk about dual angels. Now this passage was given to the Reverend G. Val Owen by the High Spirit Arnell. And in the passage, Arnell met with his friends and consulted with the angels amongst them to be ready for Christ's arrival. The group waited patiently. They watched a mountain range in the distance. Its normal lighting was crystal bright and in a golden green hue. When the light beaming down upon the mountains turned to red gold and waves of colors rippled through the atmosphere, everyone knew that Jesus was coming. Arnell describes the unfolding scene. They were outlined against the cloud of light in which Christ himself moved onward. They were very glorious and of mighty stature as of strength to match. Men and women they were, and one here and there was a dual angel, two in one. I leave it there. You would not understand that mystery, nor could I put it into words for you. They were neither bisexed nor sexless. Let it rest there. They were very lovely to see, but of softer men than the men, and more queenly than the women, their companions. Now, I have read about these dual aspects entities before. They were described as soulmates, as two personalities united perfectly balanced between male and female, aggressiveness and passiveness, action and caring, all of the best aspects of either sex combined and in harmony. How they evolved to that state, whether it is permanent or what is the ascending path, I do not know. What is certain is that attaining a harmony of female and male characteristics is vital for us to ascend. For some, the road to unification is different a male-oriented and a female-oriented spirit may meld together. They could have anticipated their eventual union with the divinity and begin that part of the process early. So let's explore this a bit more about the difference between the sexes according to the spirit world. In the book In the Greater World by Francisco Xavier, this is what we are told. The control center of sex is not located in the dense body, but in the sublime organization of the soul. Now, I read this and was intrigued. If, if there was anything about us that seemed to be rooted in our dense and primitive and often brutish bodies, it is sex. But Andres Luis Mentors tells us what sex means in the higher spiritual regions and how it molds us here on earth. This is what was said. Down on earth, men and women are distinguished according to specific organic features. As for us, in transit to higher spiritual regions, the remembrances of our earthly existence is still preponderant. We know, however, that in such higher regions, femininity and masculinity are characteristics of souls that are highly passive or openly active. So what is he telling us? He's telling us that sex is an attitude, or more succinctly, an attribute. Attributes that we acquire throughout our many lives. He describes this process further. Consequently, we know that, in the variations of our experiences, we gradually acquire divine qualities such as determination and tenderness, strength and humility, power and gentleness, intelligence and sentiment, initiative and intuition, wisdom and love until we attain our supreme balance in God. So what is he telling us is that as we progress, we learn to balance the active and passive sides of our nature. Every spirit is unique and we all will have different degrees, but all who ascend into purity will achieve a balance. The mentor tells us that the human race started out like animals where the male possessed the female. But given millennia of slow evolution, the combinations of woman-mother and man-father migrated to the concept of the tribe. The primitive shelter changed into the home, and the quest for wild game transformed into the farm. From this, the spark of sex, civilization arose. The wooden club of the caveman became the gift of flowers to his love. We must all travel this road to perfect balance. The mentor describes our journey. Sometimes human takes years, centuries, and many lifetimes to go from one level to the next. Few individuals are able to keep themselves above the fray with the equilibrium that is required. Very few have crossed the territory of ownership 
without battling cruelly with the monsters of selfishness and jealousy to which they have completely surrendered. A small number travel the road to tenderness without shackling themselves for a long stretch to the many chains of exclusiveness, and sometimes only after millennia of excruciating purifying trials can the soul reach the luminous zenith of sacrifice for its final deliverance en route to new cycles of unification with the divinity. Therefore, when we think about each other, male and female, couples of whatever combinations of sex, we must think that we own no one, we direct no one, we merely love, cherish, and help one another, always providing feedback for the spiritual benefit of our partner, each one of us learning to weigh our active and passive sides, learning to know when one is better than the other in different circumstances. Some spirits have discovered another path where they become dual angels they meld as part of their spirit their male and female characteristics into one angel how that works exactly i am not sure but it is extremely interesting i want to say if you want to know more about spirits read my book spirits and the spirit universe it will tell you about the attributes of spirits and how we ascend from one level to the next level. God bless.